Uh, when you pee, do you take your balls out? Yes. Okay. I, I mean, I do too. 95% of the time. It's got to be 100% of the time. 8% of the time. So there are two times out of 100 where you don't? There's probably one time where you just take the tip out, right? Like, so out like of what? For, for, well, maybe... You, are you fishing it through your nah, boxer hole? Well, yeah. I'm saying like maybe you're on the ski mountain and you're like, I'm not taking off my, all my ski pants. Oh. And so you just... just and, and I'll do that too if I'm on the mountain too. I'm like, you know, I'm not going to like whip out my balls over, over my zipper on that situation. We're just going to... That's that's the reason why there's a hole in those boxers, so I can just get the thing out and do my business and put it back in. And I even have to take out the balls. If we're in the bathroom, then I'm full on in the urinal, trow down, but to out. my ankles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, sure. that's the only way to pee. <laughs> I love seeing guys in the in the urinals like that. Isn't that the best? <laughs> yes. It, it shocks you. You're like, what are you doing, dude? <laughs> Welcome back to the Salty Soup Podcast. Start this shit. Cody, Dalton. Uh, speaking of what you were saying about the guy with the pants down at the urinal, I haven't, yeah. I haven't shared this story. Oh. oh I, right. But you've heard, it, you've heard it recently. One time I was, uh, my buddy was doing stand-up comedy. He did stand-up comedy for like a year just to give it a go. And uh, at, at all these open mics, like it's the same people who are trying to do stand-up comedy all the time. Mm. And there was this one guy there, and he was an electrician beforehand. But there was a terrible accident where both of his hands were blown off by electricity, and he had hooks for hands. Um, he could grip with them. They were like... Did he get like a huge insurance settlement? Like, what's a hand cost? Oh, dude, I imagine. I'm so curious. I, am, I imagine that. Yeah, I made He three, was set up for life after that. Five mill a hand <laughs> i would hope so dude you know what i mean it's gotta be something. what's your hand worth to you? i know it's gotta be something ridiculous so they have to value it like every year you're gonna work right times. now that you can't yeah yeah that's interesting i don't know i'm not a lawyer or whatever but so one night i met one of these cd open mic bars and i'm there for my buddy's stand up and i go into the bathroom and you know sometimes you don't know like if you lock the door behind you Usually you can tell if there's like just a toilet. Oh, this is a bathroom where you, you shut the door and lock it behind you. Right. Whereas like sometimes there'll be multiple urinals. You just leave it open. Right. Well, I, w I walk into this bathroom. It has a handle and a lock and I look and there is a toilet right next to a urinal without a divider. And I think this is a public toilet there's no need to lock the door yeah. like there's there are two options here weirdest mistake of my life i'm at the urinal and i'm peeing and someone walks in and i'm like as soon as i start and imme <laughs> immediately i'm like i immediately i feel oh this is a private bathroom this, i was supposed to lock the door this is not for two people i just feel that and they walk in and see you with your and pants around your ankles. <laughs> pants down to my ankles. <laughs> and they start peeing in the toilet right next to me. Oh, and that's weird. And before the flow started, I'm seeing a lot of fucking struggling down in the penis area. And then I look and I see this dick clamped between oh, a hook no. and pissing into the toilet. Oh. I stopped i cut myself off midstream i got out there no washing my hands i said to my buddy hey man great show tonight uh i gotta go <laughs> fucking got out of there <gasps> oh man the, the weirdest thing i've seen in my life is a dick just clamped in a hook well that's gonna be an image i won't be able to get out of my head for some time and now i've ruined their days <laughs> it's one of those they're like this aren't they it was, it was more like a three situation where this hook clamped down into the other two. Uh. So imagine the dick is like, like that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't understand. Get yours out. I don't understand. <laughs> well, you see, <laughs> my, my dick would not fit in that clamp. <laughs> I would have had to ask the guy at the urinal for some assistance. <laughs> hey, man, can you hold this? Yeah, sure, buddy. No problem. Just fucking grabbing this knob. At least, oh, I've been running some weird people, too, man. I've been running running some trash people. Was, trash people yeah I mean, I was at, like oscar the grouch i pull into the gas station this weekend and this guy's out hu- just hustling on on the station oh nice nice jar of water by the way is that gonna be enough for today actually i drink nine of these in a wow. day yeah on a new diet where i drink nine gallons of water every day that is quite the jar anyways this this guy's hustling on the pumps Hey, you got a, you got a dollar? You got a dollar? You know? No, I don't got any cash. Fifty cents, quarter, or anything? You know? I don't got any change. Sorry, I'll pause man. you right there. Do you, when when they ask you for cash, is your go to response I don't have cash? Even though, do you have cash? Uh, I really did not have cash in this situation. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I mean, maybe some change in the I, cup I, holder. I mean, truthfully, I have like an emergency 20 always in the truck. I'm not going to like give that up. If I would have had like a single or two, I would have considered it. I, I just don't randomly have singles laying around the truck usually. Mm, okay. Um, do I have some change laying around the truck? Yeah. And I did not give him a quarter or anything. Um, so when he said, do you have any spare change? This, and you said, no, this you're person, a liar. I, I, you're I did a filthy lie liar. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, well, that's a sin. And uh, I, this person, it's, it's funny because you're just, you're going to judge him. You're going to look at him straight up like, how, it, you, you, like <laughs> how in need is this person for me to actually donate to you? He's got on Yeezys. Uh, well, yeah, he had like, he had a Bronco coat on and like. I don't know. His clothes didn't look like bad at all. Like it wasn't doesn't look like he's hauling around a bag and he's got like he's you know living out of his backpack or something. You know. Okay. So I'm like, ah, it's, you know, I, I, you know, sometimes I do feel remorse after I just shoo somebody off. Dude, I do, man. You're just like, dude. Sometimes you're like that person looked like they needed some help. You know what I mean? You're like, fuck. I, I should have given them something. But this guy was like. This guy looks like he just got out of his car and started asking people for money or something. Like he's right. he's fine, and so I the pump ends up not working, so I have to go inside and I'm like I'm gonna get a coffee, and it was so weird because this guy's in front of me getting coffee. He's filling up his mug, doesn't get a cup, you know, and then he goes up. He's in front of the counter before me, and he asks for either like cigarettes or alcohol. I don't know what it is, and the clerk's like. You got your ID? And the guy's like, oh, I didn't know I was going to need my ID for this. So the guy just walks out the door. And then as the guy's walking out the door, the clerk's like, you got to pay for your coffee? And the guy just keeps walking. Acts like he doesn't even listen, hears him at all. And I'm like, oh. And then the clerk that was going to help me, like, runs out the, like, about to run out the door. By the time he does, the guy, like, gets in his truck already. But it's not like he drove off. The the clerk just, like, got got back in. And he sees it's, like, a work truck. He's like, call up, you know, Simon Construction over there. Say his fucking dude just stole coffee from us and shit. You know what I mean? That's these fuckers. He starts swearing up and everything. There's like ten people in here just like looking at this guy, like, oh my god. And as this happens, there's two clerks. He should have gone to Seven Eleven, man. Oh my god. Free coffee there. As the, that's true. As the there's a second clerk dealing with, guess who? Bronco coat, asking for dollar, dude. All right, he he was he had actually gotten in line while I was getting coffee, and I didn't even notice. And guess what he's buying? Uh, alcohol. Two steel reserves, forty Fuck ounces. Yeah. Boom, boom. And I mean, somebody must have given given him a you know two or three bucks, and he used it on two forty ounces. I don't feel remorseful when I tell people no about money. <sighs> And I never tell them I don't have cash. Like, if they say, do you have a dollar? I usually try to say, like, yes. Get away from me, you alcoholic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I do have a dollar. And it's, and it's mine. You say yes? I d- to their face? I, I don't know, dude. I, I'm I've really anti-lie. Yes. So I will, I will tell them straight up, I can't give you anything. Hasn't money. anybody I ever won't. taught you what a white lie is? 
I don't believe in any lie. <laughs> White or black. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I don't see color when it comes to lies, Dalton. <laughs> oh, I, I really dug myself a hole there, didn't I? I can't get out of that one. I'm just a racist now. <laughs> Uh, there's one time, I mean, it's going to be totally on your location too. Like you could live in the Midwest and never even see a homeless guy for a month, but out here in Denver, you see him every day and it's not even in Denver anymore. They're living in tents throughout the public land along the railroad tracks all over here, you know? Yeah. And one time I was taking the bus around to downtown and I'm waiting for the next bus. I was hopping on a train. You quit moving those legs, Dalton. You quit moving them right now. <laughs> I, 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 got, I got a little excited. I was telling the story. Um, I got, I'm way waiting to hop on another train, and a man approaches me, and this dude's got one arm. Okay. Other arm's not there, clearly. Did he have a hook? <laughs> no hook Insensitive. on this guy. Yeah, no hook on this one. Um, and so he comes up to me, and he's like, uh, Do you have any spare change? You know, spare change? And this guy, I felt bad for right away. One arm, like, oh, my God, what can I give this guy? And I didn't have any cash, but I was on my way to work, I think, and I had, like, a couple extra chewy chocolate chip granola bars or something like that. Mm. And I was like, I got a couple extra granola bars I can give you, man. You know, just And he said, how the fuck do you expect me to open this? <laughs> he's like, yeah, you got to open it for me. <laughs> oh, no, actually, the guy came up to me. He's like, can I get an extra hand from you? No. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> terrible. Um, no, he, right away, right away, he's like, I got food stamps, and he just walks away from me, doesn't even say another thing, like, Mm. and it was almost, it was abrupt and semi-rude, like, he knew he wasn't gonna get any cash out of me, and, like, I get it, maybe he doesn't want my, like, any sympathy or anything, too, I suppose, like. No, fuck that, dude. You offer me two granola balls right now, I'm taking them. Yeah. I am never going to be too proud for a granola bar, especially nope. a chewy chocolate chip. Are you fucking kidding me? Does does the granola bar get me drunk? No, I don't want the granola bar. <laughs> if you actually ferment it for two months, you could probably get a little buzz off a oh granola bar, God. potentially. So, yeah, I mean, I don't mean to sound like I don't want to help out homeless people. I, I actually, with this channel, I hope and in, I intend to do something nice for, for people. It could be a homeless person. Could be a waitress, could Boo. be a could be a, a streamer, a gamer streamer. Just you know, oh, trying, that kid, that's more fun. Trying to get get his viewers up or something. But I, I'm just saying, it's it's tough, man. It's tough. You're you can't help everybody. What are you gonna do? Yeah, it sounds like you know. How do you how to do give you? total sympathy to the Bronco sweater steel reserve guy? <laughs> It is probably the alcohol that led him to that situation, and now he's just stuck. Yeah, Horrible. Gotta, yeah. Did you see that? Can you imagine coming to a point in your life where you're like, I'm going to go down the gas station, just ask people for money until I can get a couple 40s today. Like, that's my, that's your life. Yeah, that'd be difficult. I don't know. I've never even... I mean, I, I've never even just asked random people for shit. You know what I mean? Like, you just figure it out on your own. I remember yeah. me and my buddy Logan, when we, were, when we were in, like, fourth grade or something like that, we would skateboard down to the grocery store, and we would sit outside there doing two things. One of them, we were making collect calls to people. What? At the payphone. You was prank caller. We were at a payphone dialing 1-800-C-L-L-L-A-T-T, something like that. That's how you make a collect call. And then <laughs> we would just, there's a phone book at this. at this For the millennials out at there. At this uh, phone know. booth. So we would just find random numbers. And we would, it, the, when you make that collect call, you have to give a name. So we would make up dumb names. <laughs> and then we'd have to listen as the recording went, would you like to accept a collect call from Mike Cock <laughs> or whatever? Yeah, just to hear it. And uh, and they would a lot of people would accept that collect call. They would pay to yell at us. Oh man, that's funny. And then the other thing we did is 
hustle people for change. Anyone coming out of that store, you're getting hustled by two fourth really? graders. Yeah, give us some money. You've asked, you've used your, your, you, your youth to, to make money. <laughs> well, there was a Hard Hobby Lobby USA. right next door, which is, or not, it wasn't a Hobby Lobby, it was a Hobby Bench, which is a really small store, but it's all about models, like model airplanes and shit, like, like kits like that that you could make. Right. So we were just trying to get money to buy a little airplane we could fly around. Sure. We were in fourth grade. And you know how often it worked? It never worked. We might have made a dollar in the many, like, many months of us doing this over summer. Have you ever stolen anything in your youth? Yeah, definitely. I remember uh, I would drive down to, in high school specifically, I would drive down to Dubuque and I would steal boxes of condoms from Walmart in Dubuque. <laughs> I don't know why. What? I have You're no, the reason why all the condoms are in a dang glass case I have, now. I have no idea. You know why? Because I was embarrassed and all my friends wanted and, and honestly you needed. You had to buy the extra smalls. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I was actually stealing them for like my buddies. Like I would steal the condoms. And you guys all put them on together. And we would all like time. try them on and be like, oh, this one's a little <laughs> loose, sir. Oh, God, it's choking me. Are they supposed to fit like that? The, the thing is. Is I told Can the, we put both of them in together? I told the story about when my teacher before uh, senior class trip opened my thing and like the condoms accordioned out onto the ground. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. I was just hoarding condoms. I was like a collector. I wasn't right. using these things. I wasn't cool just enough. The hopes, like, man, I'm going to be such a well, fucking pimp one, someday. One of these days, I'm going to use four in a day. I'm gonna, <laughs> <laughs> Never. All on different ladies. <laughs> <laughs> but, keep them coming come on i got more I, but one time i was Play with condoms here. a girl and i i was like being this like klepto and i was stealing socks and i loaded her purse up with socks and then we went through we left and the alarms went off and she's standing looking at me as they are waving the wand all around me and like patting me down looking for what i stole Little did they know, got a purse full of socks on wow. the girl who they didn't check at all. You're kidding me. What a weird. Way. And then I became very uh, scared. Scared and like a weird rule Paranoid. follower. And now I just can't steal. <clears throat> I remember when I was a kid, I believe I was 12 years old, I was with my neighbor who was the same age. His name was Cody. And sounds like a real fucking nerd. Everybody named Cody is from like the trailer park, right? <laughs> They're just pieces of shit. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, think well, of an adult named Cody. This they kid, don't exist. This kid was, was living with his mom, a single mom, who was a Wiccan. And he would tell me shit like his mom could lev levitate. And he would tell me, he, he had all these like, he said his mom has all these spell books. And one time him and I like, got all this shit together and like buried it and then made like we had like a spell for it or something like that and then he's like you gotta <laughs> at the very end he's like you gotta piss on on the grave <laughs> and i was like what he's like yeah that's that's what the spell is for you gotta piss on it. i'm gonna piss on it first and he pissed on it and then i pissed what, on it. what do you mean grave what did you guys kill it wasn't a grave it was it was like it was we i don't even know what we buried it was just like we found some shit that was laying around the house he, he's mutilating small animals yeah, and burying it them wasn't animals. that would have made it been more believable to tell you the truth but <laughs> this was just like stupid shit we could find laying around the house man it was just like it made no sense at all but yeah right. this is part of the spell um, and I don't know. The reason I brought him up entirely at all is because, well, you, maybe you could tell that his upbringing wasn't the best, but he uh, was kind of a bad apple. He, we, him, he took me, maybe my little brother was with us too. We either skated or took our bikes up to like a King Supers. And then we were like in the magazine section, look at the magazines. And then Cody's like, all right, let's take one. And I was like, what? He's like, yeah, yeah, let's take one. Grab, we're going to all go to the bathroom together. Come on. And so we all bring, have our magazines and we like, we all walk to the bathroom together. And then we all like put the magazines like in our, in our pants and then just walk out the, the King Supers and get back on our bikes and, and troll off. 
And I've, you don't think that nobody noticed it was like fourth graders <laughs> whose caps are stuffed like the founding fathers <laughs> walking out of that store? I know. Somehow I had just huge cast why did they all go into the bathroom at the same time with magazines (laughs) and now they don't have magazines (laughs) did they leave them in the toilet (laughs) it was a total just i I mean i don't know how we didn't get caught or i mean i I assume they saw it and was like well there's another dollar magazine we lost whatever right yeah probably I, 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 I think remember. that there's a certain amount of loss that doesn't matter. Like the dude who ran that you were talking about earlier, who ran out and chased the guy down for a coffee. <laughs> yeah. Who fucking cares? Yeah, that's and he didn't even steal a cup. It was a refill on his own mug, so it's like, oh my god. You're not getting paid to be security or no. loss prevention no. or whatever. Just I mean, whatever. They're not. If you're working at that gas station, no matter what, they're not paying you enough to do that to confront somebody. I tell you what, I've never ridden my bicycle so fast before <laughs> when you were leaving with Dude, your magazine after, yeah the yeah. magazine falls out of your pant leg no, you're like leave did. it, it like, get the fuck out of here <laughs> they're gonna get they're gonna get us <laughs> we see like a cop car parked like a block away like oh no they, they fucking they, 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 they call, know they, they definitely it. know and it and it was also like just slightly outside of the territory where i'd <clears throat> normally like ride my bike around you know what I mean? Like, I never went, like, this far before. Like, oh, this is kind of sketchy. You know? That's but, a perfect spot to steal. I know. Like, just outside of your, your comfort yeah, zone there. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't really remember any other time I really stole something besides then, man. Like, just that that <sighs> one time I was with Cole. I, I just never had... Oh, I have one more time. Never mind. I used to steal... I, I got together with some trailer park boys... Okay. Down in Guttenberg. Um, uh, you might even there's know. There's only one trailer park in Guttenberg. There's like the small chance you would know these guys, but um, it was these two brothers, and they we played Pokemon together. I mean, I made a lot of good trades, I believe, with them. Don't say their names, because I'm not going to go back and bleep it. I won't. Okay. I won't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a small chance you would know them, but who cares? I'll tell you later. Because um, they didn't stick around. They moved later. But anyways, these kids, they're, dude, they they were had a rough upbringing, man. Like, like I went to their trailer to trade Pokemon cards, and all that was in the fridge was like Freezy Pops. You know what I mean? You're like, oh my god. Oh, so you do know what Freezy Pops are? You son of a bitch! You fucking animal! Last podcast, freezy we went things? on for ten I mean, minutes freezy about things. Freezy Pops, <laughs> and I uh, I explained it to a T. I dissected. Oh, you mean bomb pops? <laughs> no, those are popsicle sticks. That's not what I mean. Okay, so they only have freezy so, pops. Uh, I mean, anyways, these guys are like rough upbringing, like very poor. And uh, we, we, I, I was there in Guttenberg during the summertime, and this, like growing up, we just go there for the summer for a couple of weeks. And I saw these guys for a couple of summers, and usually we want to go fishing, and we didn't have any like. I think I borrowed the pole from like my grandpa okay and so we didn't have any money for like worms so we would go up to the uh local bait and tackle shop yeah and we would take little tiny like rubber lures out of like they just had little bins kind of set up right where you just t- like little 10 cent lures or something like that and we take like i don't know a handful a couple of them i wonder what the statute limitations is. i'm gonna turn your ass in buddy i'm gonna oh. narc on you so quick I mean, statute limitations. I'm actually calling them right now. The statute limitations on is only like a decade, so I think uh, I think I'm good. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> we. Uh, it might be 20 years. I don't know. I gotta look as it up weird again. as this is, I I had to bleep that. I think that's and you can't say oh. that on YouTube. Yeah. Well, now now there's two bleeps. <laughs> For, for some reason, you can't say that on YouTube. And then there's other I'll keep, terms I'll keep that are that like. Word out, I suppose it's just yeah. <laughs> not, but it is true. Not something you can joke about, apparently. But the but the statute of limitations on stealing lures is like fifty years. Fifty? So, yeah. You no, know, so, you're fucking so. the the fifty cents. I don't even. <laughs> they it, were I definitely think, not fifty I cents. It, they I were think, like ten cents. I think to break a law, you have to steal something over fifty bucks or five hundred bucks or something, isn't it? Like oh, isn't there some kind of like 
like they're not even going to deal with it unless it's at least welcome to the cody and dalton our lawyers podcast oh i say God. you don't have to or if you steal anything less than a thousand dollars you won't get in trouble that's what you say i just said 500 know. okay 500 dollars. you won't get in trouble i believe it needs to be at least three or 500 before you get in trouble <laughs> possibly 300 dollars. you won't get in trouble <laughs> I, I don't know if we've talked about this before, but my girlfriend is a manager of a shoe store. And she gets so frustrated because... When people dump beer into shoes. Hey, all these people doing <laughs> shoeies all the time in her store. <laughs> Cut it out. Where'd you even get the beer? Because there's no beer in here. Uh, anyways, they, uh, she gets so frustrated. She's a manager. And they have cameras and everything. But people just walk in, take a handful of shoes and walk out the door. And some of these people come in multiple times a week. They've, they, she has one guy, they nicknamed him the Nike runner. Cause he literally just walks in with a pile of Nikes and leaves. Boop, boop. And they, it, even if they call the cops, maybe they'd be lucky if a cop was in the parking lot and they would do something about it. But otherwise the cop wouldn't even want to deal with the paperwork on that situation. They wouldn't even give a shit. There was one time, I don't even know if she wants me talking about this, but I'm going to talk about it anyways. She was closing the store, like just, just getting ready to shut the door, lock it. And a dude Opened it, pushed her out of the way, ran in with a duffel bag, shuff, stuffed the duffel bag, and ran back out. And she's just standing there and just watching them, like, okay, hop in, grab some shoes. See ya. Dude. Oh, wow, we we talk that? about trying to find hidden gems at Goodwill. What kind of effort is that? Fuck that. Why do we even do it? We could just be the, the Nike, the Knicks. Dude, how many? We could be, I don't, what's a good shoe here? Uh, the, a the, good the Vans shirt? runner? I'd a be the Vans hero? runner. <laughs> I would be, I dude. I think yeah. Uh, Nike is probably the way to go. It actually, it doesn't matter what you pick because you paid zero dollars for it. And how many shoe stores exist? Hundreds. Think we could fill up a fucking van with shoes and just be the shoe guys. <laughs> it, it's wild, man. You should tell the story about the refund, about how someone came in. To her store without oh. anything and got refunded for shoes that they just took off the shelf. There's definitely times where people will, uh, they'll fucking like. I remember her telling this story recently, and the story is is that. Yeah, you, you tell, you have to uh, remind me because I'm a, thinking a of a different lady story. Walks into the store, they have her on camera, she's empty handed. She goes to the back and she grabs shoes. And then she goes to the counter and says, I would like to return these. And they're like, no, we have you on camera. You just picked those off the shelves. No, we're not giving you any type of refund or cash refund or store credit. And your uh, girlfriend called the manager, or not the manager, the like corporate, because she's the manager. Yeah. And uh, they said, just give her the refund. They didn't even care. It's like, what the fuck? No, they, I mean, they... <laughs> They make so much money. And literally, they tried doing security, but the security was worthless. I mean, unless that just having a security guard around would, would deter somebody just because right. they saw him. I would... Literally, the people were still just picking up shoes and walking out, and security just didn't do anything. They were, they were like, they weren't allowed to physically do anything. So they were just supposed to yell at him, you know what I mean? And even then, it's it's a uh, there's everybody's so sue happy, you know. Like the, the I'd, they'd rather you steal a hundred dollars worth of shoes than you get fucked up by the security guard, and then the thousands of dollars worth of some bullshit that happens in the in court because this guy broke his leg because the security guard tackled him, you know. Ta my oh, I didn't tell you that. one time. My girlfriend uh, was it was so frustrated with these people stealing. This person had a whole whole thing of shoes, and she has like a procedure too. Like 
they know they're stealing. They see them. Everybody has eyes on everybody and everybody has walkie talkies. The second that you even look suspicious, you're getting talked about by everybody. Keep an eye on uh, women's aisle seven. This guy, this person's like, you know, yeah, they're doing something. And her job is to go up to these people and talk to them constantly. Hey, how's it going? You need any help at all? I'll, I love that shoe you got right there. I can go grab one for you. We can get some different sizes maybe. And even if, and then every time they pick out a shoe, is that the one you're going with? I'll go put that up at the front desk for you. We'll get that ready for you. Oh. You know, just constantly talking oh. to them. I've never realized that that is why... People constantly talk to you at the well, store. The, do you want me to put that at the front counter? Like, that's mm. such an obvious, like, we assume you're going to steal this. Yeah. Do you want me to put that at the front counter? I always say yes, because that's super convenient. <laughs> <laughs> nope. I don't want to walk around the store with it. Please, for the love of God. Yeah, you think they're going the extra mile. No, they, yeah. they just think you're trying to pocket it. They think that it. I'm a thief. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Speaking of the security guards... Wait, wait, let me finish the story. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> the, uh, she was so fed up, and finally this this person just walked out, and she had been talking to them the whole time, and then this guy just ignored her and started walking out. She's like, I know you're trying to steal these. And she hits them out of the dude's hands. And I think maybe one or two of them left there, and he just ran out with maybe two or three or something. <laughs> and he's like, you fucking bitch or some shit. Jeez. Ran, run out. And she comes home to me like crying and she's like i'm gonna get fired and i was like what and she's like yeah I'm, this guy was trying to steal and i knocked the shoes out of his hands <laughs> <laughs> and i was like well you know i don't think they're gonna fire did you physically hurt him and, right. and uh she had to tell like her superior about it like they called the next day and and uh the superiors like kind of like laughed about it. i was like oh don't do that again right. <laughs> you know what i mean like but it was, I, I felt for her. like she had come to this point where she's every day she just has to watch this and and try to deal with these people and try to turn one time this will be the last one about the shoes sorry to, to keep going about this a lady came in with a stroller with a blanket over it and and she, her job was like to talk to this lady because she was talking like I think they caught her putting shoes in the stroller and like, oh, you have a baby? How old? You know, like, like, and like, like, it was really weird about the baby, and and uh, eventually, I think they asked her. I think they called the cops on this lady for some reason. I can't remember, man. I, I, cause I think because I think the cops came to actually look under the freaking stroller. Hell yeah! And it was just full of. It shoes. was a shoe baby. Yeah, yeah, dude. <laughs> she had just been stuffing it with shoes. Um, for for that occasion, I think they did call the cops though. It's it's, it's super super rare for them to do that though. I, I don't know why that with the oh I know why. The only reason the cops were called is because a member of in the store called them. Oh, the, that that'll happen sometimes. Is people there shopping see people stealing and they'll call the cops. Mm. So then they the cops just ended up showing up and they dealt with her, but but they won't call the cops. Um, if they do, it'll be a non-emergency number. They'll say, "Hey, we have a thief here," and they won't. It won't. It won't. Nothing will come of it besides that. Pretty much. Crazy. Anyways, what was your security guard story? Oh, you were just talking about how useless uh, the security guards over there are. Mm. And there was a security guard. I, I forget his name. Oh, I do remember his name. It was Rodney. I used to work at this shithole apartment community. Uh, I might have told, said this before, but it's like where I saw my first murdered body. And uh, it was just a nightmare. And I actually lived there, too, because the rent was so fucking cheap, and especially as an employee. Right. And at the time, I was working leasing. So I was at the front desk. And we would get death threats or, like, there would be shootings. Like, think bad things would happen. You would get death threats? Yeah. Dude, when people are... For, like, threatening a victim or when something? When shit people are getting evicted, they will do whatever Do you happens. do the evicting and the, being a manager of that place? Um, well, you, what, happens, that work? what happens is... An apartment manager. When, it, when it's time to evict them, a constable comes out. Oh, no, that's then right. It had to be something... Like, a, a maintenance guy goes with the constable to change Open the locks. The and the constable oh, is there with the a lock. gun, oh, and he wow. makes sure everyone's out of the apartment. 
Oh, before you change the locks, he gets everybody out of there. Yeah. Wow. How many times you had to do that? I have never had to do that personally. I always would send like a maintenance guy with them oh, who would just change the locks. I thought you did the managing and the maintenance. I'm, I'm, I thought you did both. I, I, in different parts of my life, I have. Oh, okay. At this place, I was okay. only in leasing. Got you. Move um, on. I'm sorry. So we would get death threats. And when that would happen, our security team, which was excellent, I think, um, all I remember is this guy, Rodney. He was like the owner of the security team. And he was this like six foot seven, muscly fucking behemoth of a man that always skipped leg day. Uh. So he, he had like this bulletproof vest on over his muscles. He looked like a fucking ninja turtle. <laughs> 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 and uh, he had this dog, Cosmo. And I don't think Cosmo was a German Shepherd. I think Cosmo was a Malinois, a Belgian Malinois. You know, those fucking lunatic dogs that look like German Shepherds. Sure. And Rodney, there were like, the desk layout was weird. There were three desks that were easily accessible. And then there was a fourth desk that was behind my desk. And Rodney would sit back there with his dog Cosmo. And Cosmo had to wear a a metal cage around his snoot. Because he would fucking kill anything that came close to it. And I'm sitting there. Those are the days that I was getting the most work done. Rodney's behind me. Cosmo is directly behind me. And I'm just fucking typing away. And sometimes someone would come a little too close to me. And this dog would jump up and let out the craziest fucking barks. And I'm just like, oh, fuck. Like, I'm thinking I'm getting attacked. Right. And there would be times where someone's sitting at my desk, and I have to uh, take their paperwork and, like, walk past Cosmo to the copier to give them a copy. Yeah. And I would do that shit so fucking slowly, like, this dog is going to eat me. And Rodney would walk the complex with Cosmo sometimes, and people would try to pet it. And he'd be like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Cosmo was the scariest uh, creature I've ever Hmm. Like, been around. Did I ever tell you a story about uh, my dad's friend used to own a junk junkyard? Mm. And uh, no. it was out here in Colorado. I should look, I should ask if he's still out here. But my dad had a friend, he'd, he'd owned this junkyard, a bunch of cars, miles of land, and he had like nine Rottweilers. And these things were all like full grown, like scary motherfuckers. And, it, you know, let them roam around the lot. If you fucking were in this lot, they're getting, they're fucking tearing you up. Okay. And my, I'd show up with my dad and I was a kid, dude, little, like not even 10 years old. And I, I want, I went with him a lot because he, my dad's friend had another little boy the same age. And at this house, they had a N64 and a PS3. Oh, shit. Two. It was PS2. So I was like, uh, I think I had a 64, but he was the only kid I knew at that time that maybe had a PS2 or something. So it was like, I'm going over here. But one time we're over there, and he left the room, going to the kitchen or something. And I'm like on the X64, and then one of these dogs walks in the living room. And I'm just staring at it, dude. And I just about shit myself, <laughs> man. Like, just looking at it like, oh, my God. And, uh, you know, before I start, like, crying or something, the other, like, boy comes in, like, starts petting the dog. And I was like, is that dog supposed to be in the house? <laughs> is that a dog? <laughs> yeah, I know. And he's like, oh, yeah, this is the mama. He, she's real nice. <laughs> All the boys outside like are fucking nasty, but she's just like maybe pregnant or something. I don't know. She okay. was just she was the nice one they let in the house. Oh, dude, but I've never been so scared. Like just you know, you're just looking at this dog. Like even and that's the other thing too is sometimes dog will just send you if you look like you're not supposed to be there. They're like, oh, right. I'm gonna fuck they you. They don't up. recognize you, yeah. It, you know, if you would have come up to them like, oh, and then sometimes they're like, oh, this is somebody happy. You know, <laughs> sometimes you know, not always. I got attacked by a dog on my skateboard, and I told you that story. Yeah, I well, I hopped off my skateboard. I was like, "Oh, hey, buddy!" And then he just went from the front of me to the back of me and bit the back of my leg. I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> yeah, he didn't. He thought I was a 
deranged criminal yeah. and you kind of are i mean i heard about you stealing lures he, yeah i heard about that magazine that <laughs> game informer number two he was two. actually searching for it he's like i know it was back here somewhere oh yeah no kidding well shit man that's it what no, we're already got, at an hour i got one or two more we're, stories here hang on we're already at an hour the last First two have all, been like an hour and I, a half i do need to talk about though we have an, a new which I have to congratulate you on on the work on this, but we have a new banner logo and a uh, our YouTube logo and a banner frame. What do you call those? Yeah, a, a, a banner and then we'll call it a logo. It's like a profile picture. It, the new logo is up too, right? It's not our faces anymore. It's no longer our faces. It's our it's our and spirit the banner, animals. The banner is the gray and the black microphone here, except they don't say sure on them they say salty soup right yeah so the way it worked was i just took a photo of each mic i um edited out it saying sure i added in it saying salty soup and then i ran it to a bunch of ran it through a bunch of uh photoshop filters and like messed with the um contrast and lighting until i could make it look like a cartoon and then i dropped the background which was an image of you you have photoshop right this is what you do yeah photoshop and then i found a little cartoony image of a game boy for me and a skateboard for you Hmm. and i i duplicated those until i had a long string of them and then rotated them and copied them until it was like this vertical image dropped it back and then i dropped like a transparent layer above that so it kind of washed it out so that the um, mic stood out a little more. You got got quite a few layers going on there. That's sick. I I automatically thought that you, because you had told me you were going to pay an artist. I was going to pay an artist, and then I thought like, I actually could do this. Yeah. On and I did. Yeah. Now the soup can and the salt shaker though. I love those, dude. But that was an artist. That was an artist, and he, I someone suggested this to me last night, and this is something that I want us to do at like down the road this isn't an immediate thing there are companies that make plushes like stuffed animals oh yeah it'd be so fucking funny to have like a soup can and a salt one on each side yeah just sitting right here that'd be so good i actually started like a little box of like stuff we've done on youtube already oh yeah like the plate is in there and then like our new nunchucks are in there i have the nunchucks on my desk i was gonna leave them in the video i forgot to i was gonna i was gonna put like a nunchuck up here and a plate or something yeah or something definitely we'll we'll get to that it's so exciting to like try to plan the future of this channel and, and stuff to do where we're gonna try to do a new segment um right now our only segments are podcasts and like review videos right which sometimes the review videos are to go off into different stuff, but like our one last yeah, most recently, a couple proud. days ago, I'm pretty proud of the ninja one. I love the ninja video. Not only did we like do a review of a TikTok channel, but we also had a little arts and crafts segment, which we've never done before right. in <laughs> any channel. I don't believe. <laughs> no. Uh, no. 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 No plans on making a, t- a crafting YouTube at all, but. <laughs> <laughs> it just it just worked out, and then we also did like a, a little stunt. We did our first shoey, oh which my is a, a down in a whole beer in, a, in your shoe, uh, which I didn't know this was. I would have brought newer shoes if I knew we were going to do it that day. I, I, I wore my my dailies. I got to tell you, you had peer pressured the shoey during the last during podcast, the podcast yeah. and then we're filming the video, and I'm like. Okay, time to do the shoeies because we're fucking doing these. I, you've already made it look like if we don't, I'm the bitch. I so, had already planned on chugging the beer, but I just thought we were just going to chug it. And the shoey got brought up in the podcast because we were talking about YouTubers that right. do them and stuff. And we're like, well, now I guess we have to. Like, we want to be big someday. And I and I'm so glad that I was like, oh fuck it, I'll just do it. And even though I know I'm gonna like puke or gag or something. And I'm so glad that we did because th- that was the funniest thing that we've ever oh, caught on yeah. film. Me Candid. gagging, you immediately spitting the beer all over me, me confronting you, and you not being able to like gather yourself to oh. 
say I'm sorry or explain it. I mean, because I genuinely did not mean to spit on you, <laughs> but I just wasn't expecting you to start like gagging full on, like leaning down gagging. It, it, it threw me off. Dude, as I was editing that in that video, I'm I can't stop laughing. I'm like fucking like dragging the mouse as I'm laughing, like trying to oh. click on things. That's a beautiful video. And that could be like three TikToks as well. There's three different situations in there or, or more. So I, I, that, that video was like, it psyched me up of what the future, what you could do here. Right. Um, the, the next segment I was talking about, we were thinking about doing is, uh, there's a lot of TikToks out there that say like, if, if you've got a problem, all you got to do is this. And they have the most simple solution ever. Like, uh, yeah, I don't know. You, I guarantee you've seen they're like life 15. hacks. Yeah, little life hacks, and and uh, w- sometimes they're legit, and sometimes I think people are just trying to get some views at it. Of course, TikTok, yeah. you know. So I don't know what to call this segment. Le- is it legit? Uh, I don't know. Shit or legit? Or, uh, right. You know, maybe maybe you guys can comment below what we should call the segment, but it's going to be like a new playlist, maybe. And we look up shit on TikTok that people. Say you can solve problems easily with. You Hell know? yeah! Um, so that's going to be a video, a new segment coming out. Um, we got our new logos, a new banner. It, the, the channel's looking legit now. Like we're almost to two hundred subscribers. After what have been doing this for three or four months now? I think yeah, three or four. I, I mean, I think it's three or four. Yeah, literally, yeah. only a couple months in. We're not, we haven't paid for any ads or anything. Like we haven't put any YouTube money. Into I don't this. think that. I don't yeah, know how that works. Either. Enough people have convinced me that that doesn't work. Interesting. But <laughs> I was gonna tell you too. Uh, I saw this guy's YouTube or TikTok channel. He had his his, his own business. He he made this machine that uh, you send him an email. And this email will pop out of the printer onto a conveyor belt. And there's a printer on top of the conveyor belt that sees the whole thing get printed and then go up the conveyor belt like two feet. And then you see the, you know, the piece of paper go into just a giant flame, you know, or, or it gets burnt up. And you basically go on this guy's website and you email him what you want to get on the piece of paper and you pay for it. And he sends you the video clip of it coming out and getting fired so Hell yeah. i thought that could be an interesting little uh could be something we can put in our videos later you know what i mean right Are we an intro i don't even call those um maybe an intro yeah we don't have like a a starter clip or like a logo we could you know we don't post our logo or anything yet we have a we, transition you do have like salty soup podcast or something yeah when we do the podcast yeah not so much for the review videos right now, though. We don't have, like... Not a, for the review videos at all, because, like, as I've dived deeper and deeper into it, the review videos, uh, th- those, like, when people come to watch the podcast, they're clicking a podcast, they know it's an hour long, and it's going to be in the background. They're, like, planning to listen to an hour of shit. The review videos are totally different, where it's, like... Right. You need action immediately, and you need to look. catch people's attention right, right away. And-, and there have been mistakes. Like I've done edits on our reaction videos, and it's like that joke is just way too long in the beginning. They need to see Ninji Dave in the, in the first ten seconds, which is like right. why I like the Ninji Dave video so much is because we're there, Ninji Dave, something else, and then something else, and then something else. It's so good, man. It's like. If it, it feels to me the closest thing to a good professional video that we've done so far, you got and we got our green screen out for the first time. Yeah. I believe the first time. Maybe we tried it, but it didn't well, work yeah, before. We tried it. Yeah, right? I don't talk about before. So <laughs> that was kind of cool too. We, we did the shoeies in front of the green screen. So there's that that video is has some depth. It was, it's dynamic. It's not just a review video, which right. I've kind of made fun of before, like. I don't really watch review videos too much, but I would probably watch a crafting video and, <laughs> and you know, and then we're different, you know, like you love the review videos. So yeah, it's, that's, what's cool about it. We're just, we're just mashing things together and uh, hoping people like, it. I, I think we've made it kind of entertaining in a way, right? We kind of have this, uh, 
uh, you know, uh, we bullshit the whole time, right. through the whole, the whole process. <laughs> so I don't know if there's any other segments that you guys can think of that maybe you want us to do, let us know. Cause I'm, I'm totally interested. I'm, Mm. I don't want it to be this one channel where we're only eating livers. You know what I mean? Hopefully. No. Right now, that's our most successful video. We got 16,000 views, 180 subscribers. 16,000 views? Yes, sir. Really? Yes, sir. And like 10.2 thousand is from us eating liver, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. And another two and a half thousand from another liver king video so yeah i don't want to be the liver king guys you know what i mean? I don't ride brian's coattails yeah. to anymore 75 percent of our uh views are liver king based right now way more than that hopefully the the uh 90 something percent are liver king views <laughs> hopefully the uh liver ni- or not liver hopefully the trailer park ninja blows up because his t- his tiktok is like Two hundred thousand right now. Yeah, and I don't know what Liver Kings is right now, but I'm just saying he doesn't have a YouTube presence. I, you know, we kind of got lucky because of that. People are searching for him, and then they got got some of us instead. Hopefully, we can get some more of that, and and hopefully we can just get popular for being entertaining too. I, I That'd be the be, goal, right? Yeah. My biggest thing is I just want to make things that I want to make, and yeah, if if people sub, sick. If not then obviously I'm the only person that likes these things. I doubt that. You know what I mean? We've, we've had some, I love the comments, man. Like I love when people are like, I, I had like the last video, like I had to rewind that part 10 times and right. I just couldn't <laughs> stop laughing. That that's what makes us so, it's so rewarding. We haven't gotten paid for any of this yet. We've been putting our own cash and time into it. And we don't even know if it is going to ever go into anything. It could be a couple of years before we ever make a penny. Right. You know, so. But regardless, it's fun as it's, fuck. Yeah, we're, we're sacrificing a day, right now, one day a week. We're just yeah. like, fuck it. We're going to go for it. We're going to film some shit, have some fun doing it. I've wanted to do this for years. Like, even, as, even in high school, I've always wanted to have my own, like, you know, who, who really inspired me is Bam Margera. Really? And I don't know if you know a lot about, about uh, him. I know quite a bit, quite a yeah. Bit. I mean, you know, part of the Jackass generation. crew, even though they, they kicked him off. But he had his own series of videos at like 13 years old. And he filmed his friends doing their little Jackass stunts, stupid shit. And he was so smart. Even at that age, I don't know how he had the insight on this, but he made a video, produced a DVD, had the artwork and everything in there. And then he distributed it to the skate shops because that's where he bought his skate DVDs Right, and he skateboarded. So he had some skate clips in there. So the skateboards would be interested in it, even though it wasn't all skateboarding, it was only a couple of clips with all this jackass stuff. And he made like four little films like that called the CKYs. And they sold, sorry, they sold like millions of copies in the skate shops. And he's like 13 years old buying lamborghinis it's crazy. he he came into the jackass crew like richer than all these guys i mean they brought him on because of this kind of stuff he had this he already was doing doing what they were doing what they were trying to do so he he was really a big inspiration for me when i was in high school we filmed little skits and made a little our own little jackass video and got me into like editing and stuff i would have never got into editing if i wouldn't have watched those like cky videos and him he had to actually edit all these things and put them together on yeah. all these stupidness of him and his friends messing around. And he sold millions of copies. He distributed it himself, which is really what is the craziest part because there's plenty of people that produce their own little videos, but were you going to put it on YouTube? At that time, there was no YouTube. Right. So at that time, it's you had to get a DVD out and distribute it. What, are you going to put it in Walmart? It's like nobody's going to watch your stupid video in Walmart. Yeah. So I... I have a lot of respect for that guy. I know, you know, he gets a lot of flack for being an alcoholic nowadays, but the dude surround himself with those people. What are you going to, what do you expect? man? Yeah. It's kinda... very sad now. His, but 
sometimes it looks like he's doing good, and then sometimes it's like, holy shit. He's skating again from what social media says. Well, you know, have you seen his barn? Yeah, like, he built a huge skate park nuts. in there. And he, From what I hear, he invites the public if you want to come out and skate. You know, I've heard he's had to change the code over and over again for people fucking around, but I've heard if you're a skater you, around that area, you can get in there. Hell yeah. I've even seen people like on YouTube say we're going to the the bam ranch you know and they go out there which you know side note i would love to go on some road trips for this channel Um, some big ideas in my mind get some skateboarder dudes together and go to skatetopia okay all right i would say the bam ranch but his freaking ramps in there are so gnarly i wouldn't even be able to skate him i've seen this i definitely want to be able to he was so ambitious and he even said so he's like I built these giant ramps and the barn's not big enough. <laughs> it's like that should have went so much smaller. But um, Skatopia maybe because that's just this random acres and acres of land bought by somebody and they just had this kind of – they kind of opened it to the public and have people donate to the to it if you want to visit. And they took the donations just kept building more and more ramps and and concrete and bowls and, and it's, it's just – it's folklore kind of thing with i mean i guess it's folklore is fake i mean this is like a if you're a skateboarder it's something like uh what do you want to say like maybe it is folklore is that the word i'm looking for um sure yeah people know what you mean rumor you're just like this you hear these rumors everywhere like this you know this is this this place you you hear about like where is it it's like in the middle of nowhere like midwest somewhere i'll have to look it up i don't know okay um, my last idea for a funny thing we could drive around doing and maybe have a segment of was visiting all the dumbest museums that we could now find. Now, that's what I like. I'm so into this I idea. I like this, too. As, I, and actually, what, we should actually just start that now. We could. We could find some stuff around Colorado Definitely. easily. I, when I was in Vegas last, there was like a sex toy museum. Oh hell yeah! I would. I that would have been a easy. Dude, segment. I went to a, a cat museum in Amsterdam. Dude, I didn't see any TikToks about that. What was where were those talks? It was hilarious. It was so much f- like weird and fun. <laughs> so those are my ideas. We, I mean, there's. I'm sure there's a million things we can brainstorm about, but. I talked to you about that stupid museum idea a long time ago. Yeah, like we should I, just. Th- I'm super into that idea. Yeah, I w- yeah, I want to get out of the apartment a little bit and we'll do something else out of here. Uh, so, anyways, I'm I'm blabbing on. I'm excited about the future of this channel. Good. We, we probably got to end this thing right now. We got to get editing, get, get working on some other shit right now. But appreciate every all the support right now. We're on our way to 200. Hopefully, we're at 200 by the time you guys see this. That That's is, like tomorrow. No, it's the next day, Sunday. Yes. It's we're, unlikely, but hopefully, sure. We're going to be at 200 by tomorrow. <laughs> and that's only 800 away, hopefully, from monetization, from being legit. Do you, do you, let, do you have like a certification when we get 1,000 or nothing? Uh, you don't get when anything do you get a plaque? physical. And a plaque dude, starts we'll at 100,000. Like, just right here, dude. 100,000 is the silver play button. Okay. A million is the gold play button. We're only... You were trying to figure out the percentage of that. (laughs) You would never be able to figure that out. It's it's point oh two. By the time we get to the next podcast, I'll figure it out, guys. (laughs) Or it's point two. All right. (laughs) Goodbye.